What up, everybody? This is your boy, Jonathan Evans. Listen, I'm excited because today we're talking about soul ties. Let's get into it. Yo, listen to me now. I know this is a big topic that a lot of people have gotten caught up in, that a lot of people have experienced, and that is soul ties. When you're tied to someone, your soul is tied to that person, and you recognize that now is the time where you realize that it's time to get away, it wasn't the right choice, you need to make a break, you need to make a run, you need to move in a different direction, and that's when you actually come to the realization that you have a soul tie with that person because you're not able to pull away. You keep going back to something that your mind and your heart, the Spirit of God is telling you, this is not right. This is not where God wants you, but you are caught. Galatians 1 talks about being caught in sin or being caught in a situation that you don't want to be caught in. And you're stuck in that situation because it's only when you try to get away that you realize you can't get away. You realize that you're actually caught up in a soul tie with a person that is not your soul mate. That's not the person that God wants you to be with or the situation that you need to be in. And soul ties a lot of times have to do with our relationship that we have with the person, not just mentally, not just emotionally, not just from a purpose perspective, not just from a feelings perspective, but also from a sexual perspective. That a lot of times we're tied in a knot with someone, not just because we like them or just because we love them, even though that's part of it, but it's also biology. We've had a sexual relationship with him and God has so wired a covenant. God has so wired covenantal connection through sexual relation that when we have sexual relationship with someone, our body actually releases oxytocin, which is a hormone that bonds you to that person. Because when God created sexual relationship, he created that consummation and that covenantal connection to be a bonding agent, the final bonding agent or activity that happens that says this is where we're going to be and this is where we're going to stay. I mean, God has so wired our bodies for the covenant that he has created called marriage and the way that he has created it and the way that he has designed it is for us to not ever have to get untied. It's for us to not ever have to tear away. It's for us to stay with the person that we have covenanted with, not just from a commitment perspective, not just from a relational perspective, but also from a God covenantal perspective when it is consummated through sexual relationship. And when that bonding agent is released, when oxytocin is released, God has so wired our bodies that we do, we should not have to ever get untied from the tie that has been developed in the relationship. Listen, that's why it gets so hard. That's why the first person that you have sexual relationship with normally is the hardest to ever break away from because that's when the most oxytocin is released the first time you have sexual relation because that first time is supposed to be the only, the last time as it relates to the person that you're gonna be with. Because from a covenant perspective, it is consummated through the sexual relationship, which is why a woman bleeds on the man because covenants in the Bible were sealed in blood. Jesus shed his blood. That is the new covenant, which means you cannot be separated from him. The spiritual oxytocin is released when his blood was shed and you accept it and received you receive the sacrifice that Jesus made, the spiritual oxytocin is released, and we nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's what the Bible says. And when you look at sexual relationship, there's, there's nothing that's supposed to be able to separate you from that covenant. And so physical oxytocin is released because in the spiritual realm, when Jesus sacrificed for us and shed that blood to make us recipients of the new covenant, there's nothing that can separate us. So the sexual relation and the spiritual relation are tied in harmony with one another. That's why when you try to separate from the person that you have become one with through sexual relationship, it's tough. This is what it feels like, doesn't it? It's tearing. It tears you apart to leave that person 
to go in a different direction because you were one and you realize I moved too soon. You realize I didn't do it right. This is not the person that God has for me. I moved on a covenant and became one. The oxytocin was released. I bonded to that person before I made a commitment before God. Now I realized I moved too quick and now I have to move on. It's not right, but you're bonded. And that thing is hard to break. And most people, they separate and they want to come back together and they want to they want to tape it up to try to figure out if they can work it out only to realize, no, it doesn't work out. And, and then they and then they 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 have to do it again. And again. And it keeps happening because you're trying to separate from something that was never supposed to have to separate. A lot of people don't realize in Genesis 2, the physical is the last thing you see in that chapter. Adam and Eve, Adam was put in the garden. He was in God's presence. He was cultivating, he was called to keep, he was naming the animals. Then God brought Eve and um, said that this is your suitable helpmate. Easier connecto is the word, essential collaborator in the garden that they were cultivating purpose and destiny. All of those things were in place. Then you get to the last part of Genesis 2 and it moves through all of that. This is why a man shall leave and cleave and all of these different things that it talks about and uh, be joined to his wife. Watch this. And the two shall become one flesh. They were naked and unashamed. Those are the last two verses in the chapter because that's what you end with. Once you have the commitment, you have your wife, your husband, you have the purpose, the destiny, the calling, the cultivation, the keeping, you're in God's presence. Eden was the presence of God. All of that was taking place. It ended with the consummation. It didn't start with the consummation. It didn't start with the sexual relation. It didn't start with the two becoming one flesh, being naked and unashamed. That's not the place where it started because you don't release the oxytocin up front. You don't go straight to the covenantal bonding agent or the, 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 the covenantal uh, connection. You don't start with that. A lot of people get in relationship. Ooh, you cute. I like you. All that kind of stuff there. And after a little while, not long, especially in our culture. Boom. They covenant sexual relationship and they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it in the spiritual realm and the physical realm releasing something and then they realize as they keep doing it and tying this knot oh wait a minute this isn't right we need to we need to go in a different direction and the more you tie it and the tighter you tie it and it's hard to pull that thing apart because it was never meant to come apart. That's why God created us that way. What God is saying to us is simple. Yes, you have the connection. I need you to think about your destiny. I need you to think about your legacy, honoring God, being in my presence. I need you to do that while you're single. Adam was single. There was a lot that he was doing before his woman ever came around. And when she came around, she was easier connigdo, essential collaborator, destiny, garden, God's presence, cultivation, keeping, all of those things. She became his wife. Then the two became one flesh. And the goal of that is at the end of it all, You don't have to try to take it apart because that's the way it was meant to be. 
That's why I'm glad for me and Kanika, we decided, we dated for three years, we never had sex, sexual relationship because we knew, nah, we're not gonna tie this soul in covenant to have to tear it apart. We're gonna find out if this is where God wants me to be. And once I find out this is where God wants me to be, then I'm gonna do it the way Jesus did for us, full commitment, full covenant, and nothing will separate us. Now, I know some of you may be wondering, well, geez, I've already, I'm already in it. I've done it before, I'm already in it now. I'm trying to separate, like I'm trying to go in a different direction. God is calling me. I wanna do this differently. I've already messed up. How do I get out of a soul tie? <laughs> There's no magic potion to that one. Galatians 6.1 talks about being caught in sin. If someone is caught in sin, then a brother is born for a time of adversity. Iron sharpens iron. Bear one another's burdens. You need to be honest with the people who are godly people in your life, who you can say, listen, I'm in a soul tie. I, it's hard for me to get out. I know that I need to go in a different direction. People have been telling you he or she ain't the one, but you can't take the advice that you know is right and move on because you're tied with that person simply because of how God created it. We, you and I, we just do it wrong and get ourselves caught up. And it's gonna take prayer. It's gonna take total separation, almost as if one addicted to a drug has to go to total rehab, total disconnection, total community, total opposite direction, total prayer, total submission to God's word and to let him renew your mind, renew your heart and give you the time that the locusts have taken away. You need to find community. You need to have your prayer life right. You need to get into the scriptures as it relates to your dependency on God, being caught in a situation, temptation, all of those different things, and have people that can check you in your life until the wound begins to heal. It takes time. It's hard when the knot is this tight it takes time. When it's that tight, it takes a whole lot of time to get it out. And sometimes you have to use little needles to try to get in there to get that knot out. You need to take that time. You need to take that time to let God work on your heart, to let God work on your mind, your emotions, your mental health, from therapy to friends to faith but it is not a slow band-aid pull. It's, I've got to separate. And you've got to take the time to heal in the right place in God's presence and let his power presence through prayer overtake you with God's people. You cannot do it alone. It's not magic sauce, not magic potion, but you can do it. And then the next time, Do it the, the right way. You tie that knot, never to be untied. When that oxytocin is released, it's because you're already somebody's wife or you're already somebody's husband. And you're saying, now it's time to continue in this garden God's way. Let's do it. Listen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Listen, tough subject. I know you might be going through it. Walk with people. Uh, let people walk with you. It's hard, but it's worth it. And then we got to do it the right way, the way God intended it, in order so that we can be tied and never come untied like the gospel does for us. Listen, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell because you know someone needs this message and let's continue to grow together. All right, let's do it next time.